Hello and welcome to the Stronghold Podcast. We're coming at you from Stronghold MMA here in Singapore. Uh, lots of fights in the last couple weekends. We had a UFC last week. We had a one championship on Friday night. And then we had the UFC again this morning. Uh, I'm Luke and I'm sitting here with Jake, the producer. What's up, man? Uh, not a lot. Just pulling up things on the internet quickly that I forgot to do while I'm we were I'm setting gonna, up. I'm going to put you to work, dude. I'm going to put you to work today. That's just how it is. So uh, we talked before the podcast and we only feel like it's appropriate to salute all of the old men still kicking ass in S- mma still doing it He's- all those old fuckers all those guys that are in their late 30s and early 40s salute to them glover to share a man 40 is he, is he 41 now or is he 40 uh, i think four, I, 41 yeah 41 years old five and oh and it was like obviously in his last five fights yeah 41 years old been in the game for so long looks like a grandpa he looks like he could be your dad, <laughs> even though you guys are the same age. Yeah, we were just talking on the podcast before, and I said, uh, I was like, Glover's 41. I was like, Jake, how old are you? And he's like, uh, you know, 41. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, could you imagine being 41 years old and fighting these guys, Tiago Santos, who just went to a split decision with John Jones in his last fight? I, it's all like, I have all on getting up and getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> like, if I manage that. Imagine him. Yeah, get Imagine strength. him getting up in the morning, dude. Imagine him. And, the, and you know what? I think all the kudos goes to his coach, his team, because he, he changed his style. He's yeah. doing old man fighting, which is totally the move, right? Everybody that's listening to this podcast has probably rolled, probably <clears throat> done jiu-jitsu. And most of the people listening to the podcast have probably rolled with that one old dude who is ridiculously strong. It's called old man strength in the jiu-jitsu community. Everybody knows old man strength is legit. Yep. Even, uh, even in boxing, in every sport, combat sports, there have always been successful older fighters. Yeah. George Foreman won the heavyweight title in boxing at 45 years old. You know why? Because power is the last thing to go. Fast twitch, that goes earlier, right? Like your ability to explode and be quick and step in and slip and move and all that, that fast twitch, pop, 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 that shit goes. But raw power sticks around. All those old guys that can wrestle, that are really good at jiu-jitsu, that style is the one that has the most longevity. And you see Glover doing it, man. 41 years old, still. Think about the older guys who are pure strikers. Anderson Silva. Anderson He's not Silva. doing well in his 40s. Alistair Overeem, right? These, who are these some more guys that are like late 30s, early 40s, strikers? That Mark, are... Mark Hunt as well, just striker. Yeah. And just lost that, lost that fraction of a second that he had. That we, he, he still has the for. power, yep. but he starts to get tagged more because that fast twitch as you get older is just not there. And then, uh, and then you know, also the chin starts to go, right? Even with Glover, you see it. He can't take a punch like he could. <laughs> he just, he's gotten almost finished in a few fights in a row, but he just bites down on his mouthpiece, finds a way to get on top, and then drops bombs on people from, like, the top half guard, right? Yeah, like, he, he seems to, if he gets clipped and he falls forward, he seems to be fine because he seems to then land on him and take him down. <laughs> yeah, and just start he always he gets dropped and somehow ends up on top in, like, every scramble. <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand how. <laughs> Like, his hips have got to be, you know. Just autopilot kicks in. He's like, double leg. Oh, where am I? And then, well, another one that fought on the same card to think about is Andrei Arlovsky. Yeah. Right? Because Arlovsky's, I think he's in his 40s as well. Obviously, he has trouble taking a punch, but he still found a way to win. He hasn't really adopted that grappler style because he was never really a grappler. So with him, he's always able to, like, do okay until he either gets caught or it's going to be, like, a close decision where he's been, like, at least in the last few years. Yeah. Where he's been just, like, tying people up, pinning them against the fence, jabs, one-twos. Like he can eke out some decisions like that if he doesn't get caught. But uh, Glover is finishing people. Can you, can you bring up Glover's record, man? Yeah. Because he, he's finishing people. By the way, I can barely turn my head. I just want you, everybody to know listening. Been doing some uh, takedown defense in the classes, and we've been practicing pushing down the head. So my neck is not working great today. So there right. you go. Is that his record? Yeah, 32 and 7. So can you actually bring up his record, his MMA record, <clears throat> if just on the Wikipedia thing, uh, and then it will list all of his previous previous fights? Because I, I know he's on a 5-0 and run. I remember his last two. He finished Tiago Santos, and he finished Anthony Smith. Did he, he finish him? Or did he just beat the shit out of him for five rounds? I can't remember. I can, no, I can't remember where we're going on that one. Yeah, you got it here, right? So just go down to the record. For, how, 41? Does it say 41 up there? Well, no, it involves... Oh, yeah, 79, 28th of October. So, yeah, he's 41. 41. Just, just 41. Just turned 41. I mean, okay, so here's his record. What's his last fight? Yeah, zoom in there. 
Let's take a look at this. So his last loss was to Corey Anderson, who just fought in Bellator. He fought a really, really out of shape old Melvin Manhoff. <laughs> but uh, so Corey Anderson was the last person to beat him. And since then, Ian Kutelaba, Krylov, Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos. So, but, but even even. Corey Anderson, it's a, decision, it's a decision that he's lost. He's not been knocked out. Did Serkinov finish him, or did he finish Serkinov? Can you... Uh, he, so, Serkinov, he won. TKO, punches. He, can you go to the... I can't see the W, the win-loss thing on the left side. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Corey... Oh, so Gustafson and Anthony Johnson. Look at that. He beat Jared Cannonier too. I forgot about that. Damn, look at that. So, Jared Cannonier, Misha Serkinov, who was ranked... Uh, Ion Kutilaba, who's a beast. Krylov is ranked. Anthony Smith was ranked like four. Tiago Santos is ranked number one. <laughs> Damn, look at that. But I think he learned a lot in... Um, if you think back to the um, Anthony Johnson fight, he got, not, he got knocked out cold by Johnson. And I think that's when he changed his game to be, right, I can't just stand in the pocket and yeah. trade anymore. I've well, actually... even after that, he got finished by Gustafsson as well. Yeah. He got finished by Gu- the same thing, strikes. And then since those fights, he hasn't lost... Via strikes, he only lost that decision to Corey Anderson, who, uh, you know, I think maybe made a mistake going to Bellator. They, like Corey Anderson was going off, just fought Blahovic, and then now he's fighting Melvin Manhoff in Bellator. Like, pfft. yeah, it's not quite the same. Yeah, so. and then uh, okay, so pfft, kudos to him, man. Old man jujitsu, old man strength is real. Glover Teixeira proving it. Dude, how about all the old guys that are still hanging in there and still fighting? I was just thinking about this a minute ago. Guys that are in their late 30s, early 40s that are still fighting. Of course, you have them. Blahovich is like 37. Yeah. I think. Tony Ferguson, 38. Frank Yeager's got to be 40. Yep. Right? I mean, and Arlovsky is still fighting. Overeem's still fighting. Stipe is in his late 30s. Lola's late 30s as well. Yeah. Yoel Romero. He's yeah. 43 or something, man. Like, Yoel <laughs> Romero is like 43. These old dudes, man, they're just hanging in there. Still, I can't imagine fighting into my 40s. No. It's, it's just, I'm starting to feel it now. I'm 32. I'm starting to feel it now. Like, don't recover as quickly. Definitely starting to feel the fast twitch going a little bit because I'm not focusing on it as much. I'm not training it as much. It's a weird thing, man. I can't imagine what these guys feel the next day after a fight at 40. Like, how long does it take them to recover? Well, we, how many weeks have we been back doing light jiu-jitsu training? Two weeks? Three yeah, days. just like sp- like takedowns, quick contact stuff. Yeah, yeah. But my my first session back after that, I just woke up the next day, all my back just did one big knot. I was like, oh yeah, jujitsu's back. Yep. Yep. So my neck, man, this is the first time my neck has hurt in a long time. I forgot what it felt like. It's, it's not good. Not good. No, not good. And then so okay, so I want to talk about Glover, and then the co-main on the Teixeira fight or card was that was the Arlovsky. Right, right, Arlovsky. So Arlovsky won, won the decision. Kevin Holland won that night as well too, right? Now he's fighting again. He's coming out to fight. Who's it? He's filling in late to fight someone. Uh, but yeah, Kevin Holland fought on that card too. And then, uh, all right, dude, let's talk about, let's, let's move. We, we talked about those a little bit last week anyway. Yeah. So, um, then where do you want to go? To the one? Yeah, let's go to the one. In some sort of vague chronological order. Yeah, because, I mean, there's only two fights on the one championship that I want to talk about. Most of the listeners will probably know. Um, uh, John Lineker, he fought. John Lineker, a former UFC staple, oh, yeah. had a bunch of fights in, in the UFC. He fought for the title there. Yeah, I got the one from the week before, though, the Nasukin. Oh, we already talked about that, though. Okay. We talked about that with Tiffany as well, so oh, we yeah, can yeah. just go to Friday's. Um, but yeah, so uh, John Lineker fought his first fight in one championship. He fought Kevin Bellingen, who's a former champion. Uh, team Lakai from the Philippines. Really well-known team here in Asia. One of the top teams in, in Asia for sure. And uh, so former champion. Uh, currently, Bibiana Fernandez is the champion, which who a lot of people, the hardcore fans will know. He's been, he's been a staple outside of the UFC for a lot of years. One of the best guys in the world. And uh, so John Lineker busted him up. It was an interesting fight, right? Because those Team Lakai guys, they're all they're ve- very like uh, karate style kicking, like a lot of side kicks, a lot of back kicks, a lot of wheel kicks. Yeah. Uh, they're all really, really good kickers. Everyone from that team, Edward Foleyong and, Ed- and Bellingen and all those Team Lakai guys are really, really amazing kickers. But Lineker just walked through him, throwing bombs, throwing hooks. I think he caught him and finished him. He hit him with a punch to the head, but I think he caught him with a body shot. That kind of cr- yeah. crumbled him, and then he hit him with a punch and finished him. John Lineker's body shots are nasty. It was, it was one of those classic body shots, like that. It takes a couple of seconds for your body to go fuck this, and then you just <laughs> shut down. I think it was a right hook to the body. 
But yeah, man, his body shots are nasty. So he's that's going to be interesting. He's probably going to fight Fernandez next. Yeah. That's a great fight. Yeah. That's one of the best flyweight fights you can make outside of the UFC. That might be more people would probably be inter- and I'm not even and I'm not shitting on like Davison Figueredo or or anything like that, but since Cejudo left and since DJ left, the fact that uh, Bibiano Fernandez, John Lineker, Demetrius Johnson are all right like that's those are good flyweights. That's yeah. a, those are probably those flyweights would sell more than I think uh, Figueredo and Moreno who are fighting this weekend, right? But it's especially here in Asia where there's a lot more respect for that weight class because a lot of people are that weight class. Like he's, I think if people are listening from outside of Asia, like that is way more popular here than it is in the states where they struggle to sell the card on it. Yeah, and then but if you think about it. If you think of, I mean, DJ, a bunch of those guys could go either way. They could go to bantamweight or they could go to flyweight, yeah. right? So if you think about like the 135 pound, 125 pound, if you think of Demetrius Johnson, John Lineker, and Bibiano Fernandez, like those are as good as it gets. Yeah. Those, those, I mean, for Figueredo's a champion right now, and then I, he's fighting Moreno, but who knows those guys? I mean, actually, Figueredo's probably one, like one of the top fighters of the year right now. He's been finishing people. He's got mad power for a small guy. So he's he's straight up legit. I mean, I, I would still favor him over those other guys, but those are top top flight yeah uh, flyweights and, and bantamweights. So um, yeah, John Lineker won. He got the finish, and then uh, another fighter who people listening might know who fought in the same card is Yuri Samoyes. Yuri Samoyes, the BJJ world champion. Yep. For all the BJJ nerds out there listening, he's a he's like a double gold. I think he double golded in the IBJJF world nogis, and then he's also an ADCC. Medalist, I can't remember what medal. Did Yuri win last year? 88 kilos or something? Can't remember. Can you bring up uh, Yuri Samoyes' uh, Wikipedia or something? Just want to see where he placed in ADCC. I know he medaled. He may have won. Yeah, it's been, it's been Yuri, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's Here we be, go. <laughs> Yuri S I M Sim. Oh, okay, there it is. I didn't get it right at all. <laughs> Uh, is it what love is worth called? Yeah, so just find that Wikipedia. That should do it. Yeah, can you go to the right side and let's see those medals for Yuri Samoyes? Because there's, there's an important lesson here, ladies and gentlemen, about the difference between MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. So look at that shit. Um, yeah, yeah, 88 kilo gold. Yeah, I was right. So ADCC world champion in 2015, 88 kilos. And then uh, gold in 99 kilos in 2017. I mean, look at that. Just keep going down there. Yeah, that's a... I mean, that's his... Elite BJJ <laughs> record. That's as, as good as it gets. Yuri Samoyes is as tip of the spear in jiu-jitsu as it gets. And he had some problems with this uh, Chinese fighter. I think his name was... Was it Fan or something? Oh. I, I can't remember. Fan, Fan Rong. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, man, first of all, this Chinese kid was jacked. He was huge. I mean, they're both just beasts, gorillas, right? But you can tell, even though Yuri's like kind of a well-known nogi guy and he does a lot of wrestling you can just tell that he's not proficient yet at combining his strikes with his takedowns yeah his mma wrestling wasn't there i mean he was chasing chickens head down running across the cage he pulled guard like three or four to just flop to his back you know and it's <laughs> as much as i love jujitsu, there is nothing there is nothing more beta <laughs> than being in an MMA fight and just flopping on your fucking back and sticking your asshole up in the air for everybody to look at. Like, like I mean, I get it, right? BJJ people love pulling guard, but there's just something about seeing two people in a street fight and one guy just falls on his back. It's, it's like, it's very hard to be intimidated by that person. <laughs> Having said that, if like Paharis did it, I'm not going anywhere no, that not, dude. Like, I'm not following him to the floor. Like, oh. But uh, so far... Yeah, Samoyes, Paul Harris is, he's not like Paul Harris, right? He wasn't able to, he had a little success at the end of the fight. He, he like hit him with a punch, put him up against the cage, finally got a takedown. I mean, he even mounted him a couple times, right? But the Chinese yeah. guy knew he just got to weather the storm, not get crazy, trying to escape, leave anything open. Yeah. He would rather have him mount him than have him on his back. Yeah. Right? So he's just mounted, facing him, basically refusing to turn his back. And then, you know, Samoyes is doing the BJJ thing where he's like trying to just, yeah, jujitsu him. It's like, dude, sit, posture up and draw bombs on this guy, man. Like, but you can tell he's not uh, not fully there with the MMA fight. Yeah. And I guess it, the other guy's then just not going to like 
engage in a BJJ fight with him. He's just going to arms in across the body, protect the face, and just, you know. Yeah, and it, he got a couple takedowns, but they were late. So he only has, like, you know, 45 seconds, a minute to work or whatever. And then, but the guy, the Chinese guy, was beating him so much on the feet, and he just made him look so out of place that, you know, he just got him on the ground, and then he held him there. And as we all know, based on Tiffany Teo's fight, one, don't give a shit about takedowns no. if you're not doing anything with it, right? Yep. If you're not getting a near finish, which is the highest priority of of uh, the one criteria for yeah. scoring, a near finish, which includes a near submission. Co- correct me if I'm wrong, people, in the comments, if you know. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure that a near submission is equal to a near knockout. I think So if I drop you and I rally on you and then you recover, or I have you in an arm bar stretched out dead to rights and you somehow escape, yeah. those are score both near finishes. Or even to jump across, uh, well, jump across to the UFC when Glover had... Um Santos up against the cage at the end of round two, and then the, you know the bell saved him. That's near submission and counts for big points. Yeah, that should be a near finish. Yeah, and a near finish. That's what I like about the one scored criteria, right? So, and this is so interesting, right? Because okay, let's let's shift this into a topic of today because uh, today Paul Felder just fought uh, Rafael dos Anjos. Did you see the fight? Did you yeah, watch that yeah, one? yeah. What's that one? So that one was interesting, right? Because I was thinking about the podcast with Tiffany, and the, the you know the stand up was pretty even. Tiffany got the takedowns. I think Tiffany was the better kicker. Panda was the better. Po- we went through all this shit on the podcast, but what made it different was the fact that Tiffany secured takedowns in multiple rounds. And the fight was basically even on the feet. I mean, you could make an argument one way or the other, kicks versus punt, but it's pretty yeah. fucking even, right? Yeah. But Tiffany was controlling with the takedowns and the cage work, didn't, but it didn't score for shit. It didn't count for it. The judges did not deem that if they're even on the feet, if you're winning the takedowns, that's not enough to yeah. put you over as the winner, in the, according to them, right? In the UFC, you had Felder versus Dos Anjos. I, I would say Felder was winning the stand-up pretty out, pretty much throughout the fight. Dos Anjos had his moments, yep. and it was close. I'm not I'm not saying like Felder was out was really out working him, right? I mean, it was close, but I thought Felder was was uh, the cleaner striker. But Dos Anjos got takedowns on like every round. Yeah, first couple rounds it was like maybe a minute. 30 seconds, minute, 30 seconds. But then toward the end, he got on top for longer periods of time. I think in the fourth and fifth, he got like two minutes, which is half a round, right, yeah. uh, being on top. And, and in my head, that should be enough to win the match. If it was one scoring criteria, he may not have. Yeah, Paul Felder may have won that fight. And, uh, in fact, one judge did give it to Paul Felder, which I thought was bizarre. Did you see that? It was, I, I, it was a split decision. I knew he'd won. I, I thought it was so close, I didn't bother watching the decision. Mm. I was like, oh, well, yeah. Dos yeah, so uh, I mean, I thought Dos Anjos pretty clearly won, right? Because of those takedowns, uh, especially based on the UFC scoring criteria. That one was tough for me to watch, though, because uh, I like both guys. I, I trained with, with RDA before, Dos, with Dos Anjos at Evolve. So I always cheer for him because I trained with him. He was awesome to train with. He was super fun to roll with. He wasn't a dick at all. He was like letting me work, and then he would tap me out, and then he's like, <laughs> lets me pass, and then gives me a little bit of hope, and then crushes, crushes my dreams. That hope. And, you know, but it was fun, right? I don't, I don't mind that because, like, when he was tapping me, he was tapping me with technique. He wasn't out there like gooning me or being or anything like it. Felt I was a purple belt back then, right? And yeah. he was a fucking two stripe, three stripe black belt. So I mean, I mean to be fair, I couldn't do any better today. But <laughs> but back then it would have been even harder. And uh, I just felt those are the people that I like rolling with, are the people that when you roll with them, you feel like they're helping you. Yeah. Right. Especially when you're rolling with black belts, like coach. You know, two blue belts roll together. It may as well be two fucking gorillas. <laughs> Like fighting over a mate, right? <laughs> like to get, you get two, you, you can't stop that. Like, and good for him, right? Like two blue belts want to get after it, then they're allowed to do that. But there's nothing worse than rolling with somebody who's way better than you, and they wreck you because yeah. you're just like, what are we doing here? That's uh, Shinya Aoki, <laughs> <laughs> asshole to roll with. <laughs> Sorry. So you don't know anyone who does that? No, no, no. Don't okay. know anybody. Good, good. All my experiences have been great with, roll, with jiu-jitsu. I've never once had a bad experience. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> Every I'll time let, I get strangled, it's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but for people who are those higher belts and stuff like that, like you've got to let yourself... What's the harm in letting a blue belt pass your guard? Yeah, and exactly. In a bad position. If you can't recover, like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, why have you got that black belt if you can't? Exactly. Stop, yeah. But, uh, and, and those are great, right? Because, I mean, there's always stuff to learn. I mean, listen... I'm not. I'm also not the person that's against a black belt going out and a tap in a blue belt or a purple belt eight times in a row. Yeah. Right. But I don't want to see him elbow in their face, and I don't want to see him like, you know, just doing dick shit. Like, some people like to roll rough, and I'm I'm a wrestler, right? Wrestling is grindy. I get it, and I'm never going to tell people they can't do that. But it's certainly not pleasant for the person that's getting it done to him. And 
unlike a lot of black belts that have been black belts for 10 years, I can still relate to that feeling of what it's like to be smash. I think a lot of black belts, and I mean, I've trained with some of these guys, right? Been black belts for 10 years, 15 years. It gets harder to relate to the new white belt the longer you do it. It's just really hard to imagine when you've been a black belt for 10 or 20 years, which means you've been training for 20, 30, whatever, right? Yeah. It takes 10 years to get one. So if you're a black belt for 10 years, I mean, you haven't been getting smashed like that in a long time. So it's fair that you will just naturally grow more distant from that pain and that suffering and that intimidation that it is to walk in the, be- in the gym when you're a white belt or a blue belt, right? And uh, when you roll with those people that, that wreck you and stuff, it, it does... It can get in your head. It can do all of these things. And you just got to do it to the right people, right? Yeah. You got to find the people that are down for that. And then you can train with them like that. But, you know, if you're training with certain people and you're, you're smashing them like that, like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. It's when you see the guys in the against like, you know, a female white belt sort of thing, new student. And you're like, why, why are you trying to Americana her? You can obviously do that. You're not learning anything. It's like, just, you know, let her work and then go rough the next round. But yeah. Not on... And then uh, to, 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 so going on with the, with the Felder thing, uh, so, you know, I rolled with RDA and Paul Felder is a badass. Is there, who's more badass than Paul Felder? He's right up there with like Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier. C- can you pull up Paul Felder's record? I mean, this guy does not get enough credit. He, he, every fight he has is just like blood and guts and he never has a close, or he never has like a, he, he almost, never has a boring fight. He never has a boring fight, but he also he can't seem to get over the hump. But against all of these world class, like top five, top ten people in the world, it's like split decision, split decision, split decision, split decision. I mean, he's just like brings everybody to the brink. Look at this. So first of all, if we go down even further, because his best win is further down, right there. Stop there. Look at uh, look at. So there's this first fight with Edson Barboza, right? That was that was quite a while ago. And keep, keep going up now. Where's, uh, where's Charles? Look at that. Charles Oliveira, TKO elbow. Did you see that? I watched that fight again yesterday. He elbowed him into oblivion. He threw one elbow from the close guard, or half guard, I think, made him turn. He tapped to the yeah. strike, but the referee didn't see it. So Felder goes boom, 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 hits him with, like, unconscious, right? His elbows, he's got, I think, the most elbow wins, uh, tied for the most knockouts by elbow in UFC history. Yeah. How crazy is that? So he beat Charles Oliveira, who's, I think, ranked fifth in the world. I mean, by beat him, I mean broke his jaw with an elbow. Uh, then Mike Perry, split decision. He went up a weight class. He went up to 170 for that fight. So I'm just going to split decision, close fight. He also broke his forearm in that fight and still almost Is that won. the one where he did the spinning back fist and caught his... Maybe, yeah, maybe that was one. Think. But he, he also has a, a knockout spinning back fist win over Danny Castillo. Mm. Unconscious spinning back fist, like elbows, like Paul Felder's knockouts are insane. And then so James Vick decisioned him. Back then James Vick was like a top, top guy. Edson Barboza, another brutal fight, won by split decision. Dan Hooker in one of the best fights of the year. That Dan Hooker fight with Paul Felder was fucking crazy. I thought Felder won, uh, he, but he lost the split decision there. Hooker's ranked fifth. And then a split decision to RDA. Maybe it shouldn't have been a split decision, but the fight was close. Felder took it on five days' notice and wasn't even training. I mean, come on. He said he was um, training for a triathlon. So, mm. all right, your cardio is going to be on point if you're doing that. But it's not the same. Yeah. It's like, it's the timing. The timing is what the, the repetitions in training camp are for. Timing is the hardest thing to actually train, and it's the hardest thing to, like, bring into a fight. Like, your strength, your speed, your cardio, it's set when you get step into the cage, right? But... You know, what's not step or what's not set is your mental and then your timing. Mm. That has just rep like half a beat, you guys. Like people for people listening, if RDA is coming at you and you're trying to time a cross and he's looking to step in, and as soon as he steps in, you're trying to fire that thing down the pipe. You're dealing with milliseconds and millimeters. And if that shit is off a little bit, then you're gonna lose a fight by split decision that you might have won if you if had, you had, had, had he had five days. He wasn't training. He was running, doing a fucking marathon. And he steps in there with a former world champion who was clearly in ridiculous shape. Yeah. RDA, how many takedowns did he shoot in that fight? 20? Oh, he's getting like... I mean, how many? Was it 15, 20 takedowns? I think in the fourth round, it was 11 or something. He's hitting, like going from every single round. Every and get, single, and multiple at least times. Two multiple around. Multiple times. Yeah. And, that, and that kind of cardio, you're also not getting from running. Wrestling cardio. You're not no. getting it. He probably could have, because Paul Felder is a striker. He probably could have traded with him 
full clip pretty decently for 25 minutes. But when you gas his arms out, he's wrestling five days training. He cut 25 pounds in three fucking days, four days, and then goes in there and fights RDA. This guy needs some respect. I wish he didn't take the fight because he's right there. I want to see yeah, him. Yeah, you want him to push through. Yeah, and, but he's gangster as shit. Never turns down a fight. Never has a boring fight. Paul Felder's right there. RDA looked best as he looked for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but did you <clears> see <throat> um, RDA called out Connor? Yeah. <laughs> and then it'd be like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, RDA. So Felder was ranked, what, seventh? So RDA's probably going to bump him up there. Felder will go to eight or nine, and RDA will bump up to seven. So he, he'll be in the top ten now. I think he needs to get another fight or two before he uh, jumps in there with Connor. But there, there's people that he could fight. Yeah. Right? Tony Ferguson, that'd be a sweet fight. Yeah, look, although Ferguson beat him pretty handily last time. Oh, before, yeah, that's right. They did. Oh, sorry, yeah. not Tony Ferguson. Uh, uh, oh, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Justin yeah. Gaethje, yeah, Dos Anjos would be a good one. Um, so there's a lot of fun fights there. RDA back in the lightweight division is a good move. He brings another another savage to the, oh, Jesus, the lightweight division is just... Tch. Without Khabib, it's a lot less intimidating. But <laughs> still, like... You don't want to fight any of those. Think of the dogs. Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier, fucking uh, uh, Connor, Connor RDA, Dos Anjos, Gaethje. Gaethje. I mean, the Felder, the Warriors in that top ten. Like, all of those guys are just so fucking blood and guts. Like, Dan Hooker. Yeah. The beating he took from Edson Barboza and then the beating he had with Felder, like... Those guys are just, that is the most blood and guts division in the history of the UFC. That top 10 is just insane. You could throw Nate Diaz in there. You could throw Masvidal in there. He used to be a lightweight. I mean, holy shit. Yeah, these, <laughs> so many. They even, like, cowboying people like that or Pettis. Yeah, on the way down. But yeah. could, if, could, and then Bellator's could easily... lightweight division is good too. Bellator's lightweight division is sick too. So, I mean, yeah, that divi- and then one's lightweight division is good. Bellator's lightweight division is good. Like, pff, man, there's so much, so much talent in that division. So, uh, RDA coming back is good. A couple other good fights on that card. Um, the Williams, one that, co-main that lasted. Oh, yeah. All, the all the best seconds. name in MMA history. Chaos motherfucking Williams. <laughs> he should change his middle name to motherfucking. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos Williams. What a great name. And uh, he's... Record. He might be a Chimaev type, man. He's had two fights in the UFC, and he's not fought two minutes in the UFC yet. Yep. This fight was a 20, 30 second knockout. 30 seconds, yeah. Kind of like did a janky little cross jab, cross sat down on the last one, right down the pipe, stiffed him out. Like, reminded me of that Rich Fra- Franklin knockout when he knocked out um, Nate Quarry, where he just poof, stiff as a board straight down. So Chaos Williams, I mean, it's pretty crazy. They already had him fighting in a co-main, so they obviously... Right, yeah, they must rate him. And he was the underdog. He was like a minus 240 underdog, or the other guy was a plus or minus 240 favorite or something like that. Like he was a, a pretty big dog and just flatlined that guy instantly. If he does that again, we might have another Chimayev-type character in the... That's also lightweight, right? Yeah, or I welterweight. So. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you check? Let's see what division that Chaos is in. I think it's welterweight, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <coughs> Chaos, uh, Chaos is welterweight. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you, you wanna, can you bring out the card? Let's put it on TV there. Uh, yep. We'll run through all the rest of them. So, I didn't see. I saw actually Yoda one. Yeah, I saw that. Chaos Williams. Brendan Allen, Sean Strickland. Yeah. Kai Hansen, uh, Corey uh, yeah, McKenna. Brendan, Brendan, Brendan Allen lost to Sean Strickland. Finished him. So, that's a good win for Strickland. Who else is there? Uh, Kay Hansen, Corey McKenna, McKenna won. Okay. Okay, cool. So we got to the big ones there. Uh, next week, see, I got my new Khabib shirt in honor of the fucking legend that is Khabib. He's apparently still in the USADA test pool. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder what that means. So uh, I'm curious to see what they say with this uh, Poirier McGregor fight. Apparently, they're having trouble coming to con- contractual agreements, which is not surprising when Conor McGregor is negotiating one side. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think they'll make it happen. But I wonder if it's going to be for an interim title. Khabib's not going to vacate yet. <clears throat> so I wonder if they'll put it for the interim title or if they're just going to... Call it a title. Mm. Yeah. Or non-title. They'll probably make it interim at least. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else. Because and I also heard for. that uh, Tony Ferguson apparently is more warming up to the Michael Chandler fight. That would be a crazy fight. That would be a crazy fight. I don't know who will win that fight. Tony Ferguson's getting a little old. That fight with Justin Gaethje scared me. Yeah. He looked f- 
scary by the end of that fight. And he's really thin. Like, he's thin. He used to just, his back used to be huge. And that's one of the things you can tell about him uh, getting older. It's like, his chin still held up against Gaethje, but, I mean, he does look a little bit more frail. I mean, uh, he, he always, and his, but he's a cardio machine. I think he used to lift more and he used to focus more on his split. And now these days he's just doing yeah, cardio insane all cardio. the time. But the only thing against him versus Chandler is like Tony Ferguson gets hit a lot in the first couple of rounds. Yeah. You don't really want Michael Chandler to hit you. Yeah. Especially early. Yeah. He's so explosive. He's so explosive. But Michael Chandler also gets hit. Yeah. Michael Chandler also gets hit and nobody fights from their back like Tony Ferguson. He's the best striker from the guard in MMA. Yeah. Who strikes from their back better than Tony Ferguson? He's fucked up several people from his back. Cut him up, triangle Kevin Lee, elbowing him in the face, like after elbowing him from the back and cutting him, like he, he's probably the best uh, best guy in the world with striking off of his back. Yeah, he's uh, as I say, it was a shame. Shame him and uh, Khabib never happened. Just to I see. hope they still do it. If Tony Ferguson wins against Chandler then he's definitely gonna fight whoever wins between Poirier and McGregor unless Khabib comes back that Khabib fight could still happen if he can get a win the, there's still a hope there's maybe, still a, maybe. if he loses one more it's done yeah. the Khabib fight's gone but if he can win this fight let's say Khabib takes a year off he's only 31 right or 32 yeah 32 he, he can totally take a year off yep. he could take it whatever six months a year so the Conor uh, Poirier fight's happening in January Ferguson fights Chandler wins Fights the winner of McGregor Poirier. End of next year, you could do. Uh, you could do if Tony won two fights. You could do Tony Khabib, and it could be his last fight, the one that he should have had this whole time, and then uh, go off to the sunset, thirty and zero, or a horrible twenty nine and one. <laughs> if he if he loses, he's gonna regret coming back. Why did, so why did it come back? But uh, I love Tony Ferguson. Like, if 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 I want anybody to beat Khabib, and I love Khabib, I mean he's probably my favorite fighter. But Tony Ferguson is right there. Yeah. Tony Ferguson is crazy. He's just crazy. You see it when he fights, right? Like Khabib is dominant. He's just an immovable object, right? But Tony Ferguson is just chaos incarnate when he fights. And there's something to be said for that. He's one of those guys like Gaethje. You just never can be broken unless they're just unconscious. That's it. It's the only way they stop. I, he's, I love his training videos where he's just doing mad shit. Doing kick, nonsense. Kick, kicking metal bars, yeah. monkey flips and stuff like that. You're like, oh, good. Yeah, you're getting ready for a fight then. Yeah, I love the Sean O'Malley's videos where he's like yeah. trolling Tony, for, like doing front rolls and flying kicks into things and jumping off the walls. And <laughs> Have you seen the one where his coach has <laughs> got a like, joint in his mouth up while he's doing it? It's just ridiculous. It's his coach is sat on a moped and he's running after the moped <laughs> going one, two. Yeah, it's, he, he's funny, man. Uh, he's another one I'd like to see come back pretty soon Sean O'Malley yeah you just hope he's not got because he's, he's gone with his knee a couple of times now yeah, in his the legs. fight and he's skinny just like, legs yeah is that skinny him? legs is he always going to have that and is that going to be his Achilles heel so uh, what, can you pull up the fight card next week yep let's uh, break that one down before we get into any other shenanigans and then we can go through some if main events or, or some uh, new oh, stories or something the, down the bottom so you got down the bottom. Uh, Hoo-ha. Shogun, Hua, and Paul Craig. Oh my God! Old people unite. Shogun still 38. doing. You know what? Fuck it. Shogun versus Glover Teixeira <laughs> for the old man light heavyweight title of the world. That'd be a good fight. I'd watch that fight. Yeah, I'd watch that. Shogun yeah. and who? And uh, Glover, battle of the old men. I think. Who you got for that one then? Is it a rematch? Didn't they fight previously? Do not know. Paul Craig? Find out. I feel like they fought before. Might be totally wrong about that. Yeah, let's see Paul Craig's record. Is he, he's, is he ranked right now? <clears throat> yeah, zoom in there. Let's see what we got. And you can put it on the main screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? My MMA brain is still highly functioning. Mauricio Hua, split draw, UFC fight night. What year was that? Uh, 2019 okay. November. So 2019 so. they fought. I remember that fight. Um, split decision draw or split draw. So yeah, do the rematch. It's a good fight for Shogun, I guess. He doesn't need to be in there fighting all the. Well, I was gonna say the young people. He could fight Glover, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he doesn't want to be in there fighting those young guys. But Paul Craig's a good fight. What if he wins though, man? They're gonna stick him in there with. Yeah, who would he then put him put him in against? Is uh, it depends on how long he wants to fight. I mean, how many more years are you gonna do it? How old Shogun now? 
Uh, 38. God, he's not even that old, but but he looks like a million. <laughs> like he, he's, you know, he's had a lot of wars, man. He's had so many crazy fights. The fact that he's still in there. And he's one of those guys, too, that as he's getting older, is not adjusting his style. He's still just out there banging. Okay, so that would be a good fight. Shogun, Paul Craig. Got to root for Shogun. I just can't help myself. Uh, but I don't know how much longer I want to see him fight. All right, Caitlin Chukagian. She's fighting Cal- Cynthia Calvillo. That's a good fight. Yep. That's a good fight. All right, Chukagian. She's just coming off a loss against... I uh, can't remember. She fought recently. And then we have... Mike Perry and Tim Means. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mike, ah, oh, that was supposed to be Robbie Lawler, right? Damn you. Damn you, MMA gods. Robbie Lawler, Mike Perry, that shit would be sick. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be a great fight. Uh, but Tim Means, no joke. He's one of those uh, old veterans. Tim Means is nasty. He's uh, got a really good clinch, really good long punches, super durable, old school vet. Uh, really tricky. Had a lot of fights. 30 and 12 was his record. So, I mean, he's... he's Got more wins than Mike Perry has fights, pretty much. <laughs> Not quite, but he's more than doubled him in experience. And that should be a sick fight, though. I think that could probably be your fight of the night right there. Then uh, you got uh, Shevchenkov against uh, Jennifer Meyer. Shevchenko. Shevchenkov. Shevchenkov. <laughs> Shevchenkov. <laughs> so we got Shevchenkov and Maya. Yeah, I feel like this is just going to be another sacrifice to Shevchenko's... Resume here. Yep. Because, I mean, Jennifer Maya, I just don't think. You know, Shevchenko and, and uh, Amanda Nunes are just clearly the best two women in the world. They fought twice. Split decision. I mean, Shevchenko, look at it. First of all, Shevchenko is two weight classes below Amanda Nunes. Yeah. So, Shevchenko's fighting at what? 115 now, right? 115 pounds? Fly, I don't know what women's flyby is. It should say. It should say right there. I think it's 115 pounds. Pretty oh, sure. It's in kg. What is it? <laughs> so 56.7 kg. Yeah, so that's right. 100, so 115, right? I don't know. You know kilos. I don't know kilos. I'm American, dude. I don't know that shit. Yeah, but I don't know what they are in so pounds. Long, I should know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the point is, is that Shevchenko is the, the champion in, what's, what, is it ben, women's... Flyweight? Yeah. Flyweight. Right, women's flyweight. Amanda Nunes was the bantamweight champion, which is 135. And then she's also the 145-pound champion. So, I mean, you're dealing with 30-pound difference, and Shevchenko still nearly beat her. Yeah. Amanda Nunes, who's Flies, yeah. the GOAT of all GOATs, like finished every other champion in the history of her division. Beat the who's who. Literally the every division. single yeah. champion in the history of the division. And Shevchenko pushed her to the limit, clearly 20 to 30 pounds Lower, uh, smaller, just naturally. So she is a beast. And I would not be surprised if she smashed Jennifer Maya. But if Jennifer Maya wins, that would be crazy. That would, I mean, I bet you can't see the odds there, but I bet you they're not looking good for, no. for Maya. It's, uh, if, you, if you want in a big outsider bet, go for Maya in that fight. <laughs> and kiss your money goodbye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, all right, and then the main event, what do we got? Oh, Davison Figueredo and Alex Perez. That's right, Alex Perez, not Moreno. So Alex Perez, uh, I mean, Davison Figueredo, I mean, he could be up there for fighter of the year. He had those two knockouts against Benavidez. I think he's had a bunch of knockouts uh, in a row. The guy's got dynamite in his hand. He's also got good jiu-jitsu. He's got a couple submissions in the UFC as well. Uh, I don't think he's lost uh, in the UFC. Uh, so can you, can you pull up their records, Jake? Just go, yep. to, go to Figueredo, and then uh, after that we can click on Perez. I've seen Perez fight a few times, but I don't know who he's fought recently. But this men's flyweight division definitely needs some life breathed back into it. Right, so, oh, he did, okay, so he lost to, oh, he lost to Formiga. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Okay, so, so Davidson Figueredo has lost in the UFC. He lost to uh, Formiga, who's still fighting. And then, uh, so can you zoom in there so I can see the names a bit, Jay? Yeah. All right, so, uh, there you go. Okay, good. So, look, so he beat Moraga, he beat Morales. He lost to Formiga, and then he beat Pantoja, Tim Elliott, Benavidez twice. Yeah. Yep. It's just, uh, it's hard to get excited for the flyweights without DJ and Cejudo. Yeah, without, without the best two in the world, yeah. it's not overly exciting. It's kind of hard to get super excited for. I mean, it, to be fair, it's, this, is a, this is a rebuilding stage in the division. 
I mean, just remember a year ago, they were talking about getting rid of it completely. I don't want them to get rid of the division, that's for sure. I want those guys to still get paid, and I want that division to still exist in the UFC. But they definitely have a, a problem with the star power, with the names in the division now that... I mean, because even the biggest names, Cejudo and Demetrius Johnson, were not that big compared to all the other champions anyway. So the fact that now we don't even have the previous top guys there, like the lineage is broken, right? Because uh, DJ is obviously the best of all time in the division, and then Cejudo came in and beat him, and then Cejudo kind of fucked off, and then there was that weird TJ Dillashaw fight. And then uh, TJ must be TJ's coming both back out. pretty, but TJ's coming back pretty soon. I think, I think he's back in like February out, or yeah. March yeah. or something like that. But he he blames blames his uh, testing pop, popping for Usada. He blames that on having to cut down to that weight class. So he's not going to fight down at one twenty five. Well, what again. does that have to do with anything? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, is, that sounds like some circular <laughs> reasoning there. I, I wanted to get smaller, so I took steroids. Yeah. That, that's not how steroids work, mate. Well, you can take you can definitely take some steroids or some some performance enhancing drugs of, of many varieties that can help you lose weight, help you be healthier when you're younger or when you're, uh, when you're, uh, thinner, when you're lighter, keep your energy levels up. You don't, you're not sore as much. I mean, there's, it does a bunch of stuff, right? Depending on what you take. Yeah. He's, uh, I, what do you think the reception is going to be like for TJ Dillashaw when he comes back? I think, I mean, I because he I'd... was always kind of one of those guys that pissed people off anyway. And then, you know, it's like, like, some people can get away with it. Some people, they pop for PDs, and you're just like, uh, you know, you don't like, like Chael Sonnen. He's popped, <laughs> yeah. like, 20 fucking times. Everybody still loves him. Like, some people get He makes a from. fucked up joke about it. He says he's sorry, and then that's it, right? He just, he says something hilarious, and then you move on, you don't think about it. John Jones, same thing. I mean, yeah. people, so, people, his legacy is hurt, but, like, people still want to see him fight. Nobody's, nobody would want him to not compete anymore, right? A lot of the guys that pop, Anderson, Anderson popped, no one says anything about it. No, I other than other than it affecting their legacy, it doesn't seem like the the sort of feeling on it extends beyond that. Like people aren't mad about it after people serve well, their suspensions for the most part. V- but Dillashaw does rub people the wrong way, so I wonder how he's going to be when he comes back. If he's going to be, people are going to want to watch him lose or see how he wins. Like does. I think he, he's he's a good fighter though. Like I I, li- I like watching him fight. He always puts on the oh, show. He's an amazing fighter. Yeah. He's so talented. Like. He's a vicious striker. And do I, do I care that he took drugs one time? No, no, I do not. I'll watch him fight. To be fair, he did get instant karma, right? Like, he, <laughs> he got instant karma. Like, he popped, but he got finished in, like, a couple a minute or something by, yeah. by Cejudo. And then uh, kept and then was crying about it being an early stoppage and then popped for fucking <laughs> steroids. It's like, uh, well... Uh, I think you are focusing on the wrong thing here, dude. <laughs> I think you're focusing on the wrong you, thing. You might have had bigger problems in that fight. <laughs> yeah. So, it, I don't know. I, I'm happy he'll come back. I, get, I mean, Cruz is, Dominic Cruz is still in the mix there, too. Because uh, Cejudo have both those, those divisions open. So, yeah. it's going to take a little while to rebuild the flyweight division and to rebuild the, the bantamweight division. But Piotr Jan is a... The difference between him, at least right now, is people know that guy's legit. Davis and Figueredo, people know he's legit, too. But he just hasn't had enough time to cement himself as a champion. But uh, Jan's fighting soon, right? Is he... They, sure. I think they pretty much confirmed that Aljamain Sterling fight. Uh, maybe not soon, but maybe beginning of next year. And Sandhagen's right there. Uh, that'd be a good fight. Uh, Dominic Cruz and Sandhagen. Yeah. That'd be a solid fight. See who the top contender there is. Yeah, throw uh, TJ back in. What's going on? Did Cody Garbrandt... Oh, Garbrandt won his last fight, didn't he? That he was, was supposed ridiculous. to go down and fight for the flyweight title, and then he got injured. Yeah. So that would have been... If Figueredo can get through Garbrandt, that will put him over the top. Then he'll get the rub. And I think people will, will be more interested to watch him fight. And if Garbrandt wins, they have a guy that they've already, that is already yeah. quite marketable as the champion down there. So that, that was the one that everybody wanted to see. No disrespect to uh, Perez, but... Uh, oh, did you pull... Can, can you click through Perez? Let me see who he's fought recently. I don't know about to... Because I'm a little out of the loop with him. I can't remember the last fight I saw him have. He's not, he's not very famous. I have to put Alex Perez MMA to get him. Yeah. <laughs> you can always tell. Yeah, that's why no one's too crunk for this fight. Because it's a, it's a flyweight title fight, but it was supposed to be Garbrandt. It's not Garbrandt. It's not Cejudo. It's not DJ. Oh, so he beat Formiga recently. That's right. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. And, but he lost to Benavides. So, I mean, it's just a circle, right? Formiga beats um, Figueredo. 
and then Figueredo beats Benavidez twice, but then Benavidez beats Perez. It's all about styles. Styles make fights, everybody. So this should be a good one. I'll, I'll watch it. I'm going to watch it. Yep. I don't really have a huge preference on it, but I'm definitely going to watch it. The card is good. I mean, the Shogun is the first fight on the main card, so actually I think this is probably the best card in a few weeks. Main event leaves a little something to be desired, but it was supposed to be pretty bomb with, with Cody Garbrandt in there. So still, good fights next week. No, it should be good. All right, man. Should we uh, move on? You got some some news stories, some videos. What do you got for me? Um, oh, is it on the WhatsApp? The you, you sent me through the Singapore guy, the oh, car park right. knockout. Will it oh. be on the WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah. Let's watch the Hawker knockout. So maybe we should make a just make a mothership segment on this <laughs> this podcast where we just go through mothership. I, I I found a bunch of street fights on there. I mean, we, we could definitely go through uh, mothership. What's the other one? Uh, the other one where you report stuff? Uh, I can't remember. Ah, oh, shit. What's that other website? Oh, it's stuck right on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, in Singapore, people love to rat on each other, and people love to film uh, violence rather than stepping in and preventing it or yeah, doing rather, anything to Rather than actually helping in any way, shape, or it's, form. Just get your camera out. It's kind of one of the national <laughs> pastimes here. Oh, look, people are fighting. <laughs> Stay back. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of them, man. You, you can go check. Okay, <laughs> here we go. All right, so let's, let's, let's restart that, dude. Let's see what we got here. Let's right. see the situation here. So uh, Greg, <laughs> Greg sent me this. Look at this. They're already. Can you go back to the beginning? Yep. I want to break through this whole thing and then yeah. just make it full screen. Uh, here we go. Right. Can you, actually, no, so pause it for a second. Can you read the, the background for the listeners? Oh, it should be on the top there. If you scroll up, it'll give you the background of the story. Yeah. So a fight involving four men broke out in the car park at Golden Mile Tower. One minute video posted to Facebook on November 11th showed the altercation where one man took on three men at the same time and prevailed. Excellent, excellent. By the way, I don't know the, any of the backstory behind this, so I'm gonna cheer based on only one guy fighting three people, <laughs> even though he could have totally been in the wrong and I have no context here, just like to let you know. So uh, for the listeners, uh, Golden Mile, it's like a, it's like a Thai mall here in Singapore. And, you know, fighting is rare in Singapore. Yeah. Like, uh, for the listeners who aren't from Singapore, you probably have some sort of perspective on what you think Singapore is based on the media. Everybody kind of knows that it's, uh, it's a very strict country to live in. They have zero tolerance for bullshit, including fighting. There's no weapons, right? You can't have guns, knives. Uh, and you get in a fight here, your ass is going to jail. And also, you get in a fight here and you're a foreigner... Your ass is going to jail and you're getting kicked out. Yep. Like they have no tolerance for foreigners coming here and getting in fights. So a lot of times, a lot of these fights that you see are people who are coming from other countries where maybe they're a little bit more liberal with bar fights, right? Where it's like, uh, you know, you get in a bar fight, get in a bar fight in America, like the cops are just going to come, tell you to go home. Yeah, you know? sleep it off. Unless someone's like really injured. Like, but if it's just, you know, you're just scuffing boots a little bit, throwing those a punch and then they break it up or whatever, like you're just going to get told to go home. But in Singapore, you are going to get fined and jailed and kicked out of the country 100%. And yet, there are still tons of fights here in Singapore. <laughs> There's still people just can't stop. People can't. That's why I'm telling everybody, train martial arts. I don't care if you're in Singapore. You could be in a three-on-one situation with three uncles on you because you knocked over their chicken rice. And then that's it. Yeah. Train, train martial arts. All right. So, so that's the context here. Uh, they're at a mall. And I don't even know what the backs are, what they're fighting about. But uh, let's watch this because it's a three-on-one type situation. And, uh, you know, this is people that don't know how to fight. So we got a vertical camera here. That's the only problem with it. I can't. It's okay. It's fine like that, though. All right. I mean, so I mean, it's so we see we got a little push here. here. There's three people. Bang. Boom. Clocks the first one. Three people standing in front of him. And he clocks the first one. Some guy's just sitting in his car filming <laughs> just, it. Just turn the right off. Guy. What? Dude, two of them are down already. Look at this. The guy gets back up. They're still pushing and poking. Ooh. Oh! Knocked out cold. This is why you don't pick street fights, everybody. You don't know. But that's the dangerous one when people go down like that yeah, on that's concrete. Not, that's, that's what kills good. people. I kind of like exclaim because, you know, it's like, you can't really react appropriately to that. <laughs> <laughs> I also see knockouts all the time, so I'm kind of desensitized to it. But that's on a, in a street fight on a hard floor. That's bad news. You can seriously hurt people. And uh, so is that it? Was it fighting done? It looks like. Yep. Looks like All it's right. finished. I mean, that guy got knocked out cold, cold. 
And that is why you should never, ever get into a street fight. But, but if you do, take the person down. Use jujitsu. Just con- <clears throat> pin their wrists. Just control them. Let them have a little temper tantrum. Take their back. You know, if you have to choke them because they're really, then you do that. But then you let them go. You just let them know that, hey, you're not getting out. You know, you pin their arms behind, control them. You do not want to get into a stand-up fight with strangers where you're throwing punches and kicks at each other. You, you don't want to be in that situation. The guy in that video is like, looks like some old uncle. So if you're a bit of a meathead, you'll be like, oh, well, this is an old man. I'll they do all look like. middle-aged. Yeah. That wasn't a bunch of teenagers. Yeah. Like, that guy had white hair. <laughs> the guy that knocked the guy out cold looked like he was 50. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people train martial arts in Asia. Like, a lot of people do that. So, you know, you're... You know, we always talk about a Thailand or something. You go get in a fight in a Thai bar, like pfft. they all do Muay Thai. Yeah, I mean, and they've had a hundred. They've fights. had some. They've had some. Like, good luck picking a fight there. And and same thing in Singapore. Really anywhere, right? You just don't want to be picking fights. It's something that, but it's very surprising to see old people like that get into a fight, right? That's yeah. It's, it's, it's clearly something's gone wrong in a game of mahjong or something ridiculous, and that's where it's ended up. Well, I saw I saw one uh, recent we recently where it was like three young guys and one old guy. Yeah, and I think that was on Mothership or something like that too. And that one was interesting because they're just the kids are just being little shitheads, right? They're just like uh, getting around him and then poking him when he's turning around and it's kind of slapping it and they're surrounding him. Like this is this old guy is like he feels so disrespected that he can't not rage, right? Because yeah. these young teen he's like probably respected and has a family and all this kind of stuff and these young teens are just fucking with him and he's just doing but he can't do and he just can't handle the fact that they're they're badgering him like that right like he just is so against what he deals with in his day to day <laughs> life that he freaks out starts throwing punches and then I think one of the kids head kicks him Jesus I mean it was brutal I have it on my phone I can, <laughs> can probably pull we can, it up we can laugh at that inappropriately as well what is that other website where they post they post those things no I'm drawing a mental blank <sighs> I think I have it saved on my phone. I, I don't there's a few it. on uh, on Facebook. There's a few like Singapore Uncensored and stuff like that. And you see some of the mad stuff on there that you don't see in your daily life I, in Singapore. I even recorded a video that I did where uh, I broke down fights from this website because they're all in Singapore. So like it was during uh, Circuit Breaker. Yeah. So I was just trying to put out some content. So I was like, all right, I'll break down some street fight videos or whatever. It was all from this one website. It was all in Singapore. So I thought it'd be kind of cool. And then uh, after I did it, I did. I ended up not liking it. So I just deleted it. <laughs> but this website, it was great. I get all, it's not Mothership. It's, it, it's the other one where you can report stuff and fights and all the Singaporeans listening to this are screaming it into the yeah, screaming their, their right phones now. right now. You know. Anyway, we don't have to, to worry about it too much. But Okay, we got anything else? So don't get in street fights. That's the moral of the story. If you do, you've got to learn your wrestling. Take the lesson from uh, the Yuri Samoyce fight where this is a guy who's a multiple time jiu-jitsu world champion, world champion, world champion, who doesn't have the wrestling skills to use his jiu-jitsu against a guy who looks like a beast, but he's also pretty new. To be fair to Yuri Samoyce, he's not been fighting too long. It's, it's totally reasonable for him to struggle with some aspects of MMA early on. But, uh, you know, it's always funny to think when pure BJJ people, even black belts, just think that they can fight MMA. Yeah, and just have immediate success. They'll just take people down and do jujitsu. Chuck them out. It's like you can't just do jujitsu in an MMA fight. Like it's it's but, a lot harder yeah. than you think. But that's why he's um, even trying to pull guard, right? And that guy's just like, all right, cool. Yeah. I'll just kick your legs. I'll step back. Just flopping down over and over again. I think that's why um, when Eddie Bravo brought in the combat jujitsu, like I was pumped for that at first. I was like, oh yeah, that's a really interesting concept, and to help people make that bridge. But then he seems to now favor that over the actual EBIs. They should just do both. I don't yeah. know why they don't do both. Put them both in the same card. Yeah. You know, because, uh, I mean, the combat jiu-jitsu is really cool, but the EBI jiu-jitsu was sick. Those, two, those, those were amazing. And you hate to see those go. Yeah. Because plus, it, it had a lot of momentum. Like, those shows were solid. Uh, they were still making new ones. It was like the only jiu-jitsu show that actually, like, kept going. Yeah. Uh, Submission Underground is doing okay. They still seem to be putting out shows the, pretty um, regularly right now. Quintet as well, the Japanese one. They've, put on They've only had a few ones. shows, though. Remains to, be, remains to be seen what their staying power is. But, uh, yeah, those are cool. All the Fight Pass stuff is, is pretty sweet. Um, all right, dude, you got anything else? Oh, what, do you have, what do you have loaded up there, you so, son of a bitch? For, for everyone, uh, it's coming out this, this Friday, 20th of November, a film about the sport we all do. Here we go. I'm sure it's very accurate. Yeah. You all know Jiu-Jitsu starring Nicholas Black Belt Cage. I have no idea what is going on in this movie. 
I've I watched the trailer and I feel like I'm watching surreal art. Like I have no, I can't tell if it's, it looks a little like Star Wars. It looks a little like Robocop sort of thing. It's yeah. got Predator in there. It's called Jiu Jitsu for some reason, which I have no idea why they went with that. There's, there's a line in the trailer where- um, Can we watch the trailers on- uh, we I, can't, we, I can't get the sound on right now. We can't oh, yeah. get the equipment. But there's a line in the trailer where Nick Cage sort of like points to someone who's crazy Nick Cage voice goes, you are the Jiu Jitsu. You are the, the Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> But that's not how it works. So, I, so firstly, when are we getting our jujitsu swords in training? I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we're gonna do a, a breakdown of the movie where we go over the proper defense for uh, sword fighting, as as is the normal in jujitsu. Yeah, as we do every um, lesson. I just, I can't have no idea what. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's do me a favor. Look up this movie. Read to me the plot. I want to hear. I want to hear what the filmmakers, how they describe their own movie. Let's just get the gist of the main plot here. Because it doesn't have shit to do with jujitsu, And I can't get a, a beat on what the hell this movie's about. I, should, I could do it in a, the, the dramatic cinema voice. Yeah, do it in that yeah, guy's... Uh, when Jake, in a world. <laughs> when Jake Barnes, a master jujitsu fighter, refuses to face Brax... An okay. indominal what? alien creature. Okay, normal voice now. Wait, uh, yeah, that, that, read, read the last line again. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> what? what? When, when Jake, Jake Barnes, a master jujitsu fighter, non-nickel bra- non black belts. <laughs> That's Nicolas Cage's character. Uh, presumably. Uh, presumably, okay, yeah. Let's anyway. just say it is for the sake of argument. Okay. He refuses to face Brax, an in- indomitable alien creature. The future of humanity hangs in the balance. I'm following it so far. Injured and suffering from severe amnesia. Oh, oh, oh no! Is it an amnesia movie too? Oh my just, goodness! Just let's, throw everything. We want everything in this movie yeah. from every, every movie yes. ever made. Yes, let's let's get more uh, tropes here. More excellent, okay, so outdated, cliche tropes, please. Here, here comes the next trope. All right, Jake is captured by a military squad. Unequipped to fight the merciless intruder who has descended upon the planet, Jake is re- rescued by Wile and an ancient order of jiu-jitsu fighters who must help him recover his memory and regain his strength in order to band together and defeat Brax in an epic battle that will determine the fate of mankind. Wow. There is so much... so much to process <laughs> about the description of this movie. So... It is, a, it is a movie about a jiu-jitsu master who's trying to fight an alien invader. And the jiu-jitsu guy also happens to have amnesia. And while, my favorite movie part of this plot is that then he just also happens to run into another bunch of jiu-jitsu fighters. The ancient order. Of, yeah. So it's got a little bit of like the Jedi kind of thing going on. It's got a little bit of... But like in the video, in the trailer, they're like... Aren't there guns and swords and yep. shit like that? Like laser beam La- guns? Laser weapons, all everything. So we can. So if there's no sound, we can play the trailer, right? Or at least talk over it or something. Because I, 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 I feel like we, this deserves a deeper dive. <laughs> I feel like we're not getting into the layers of the movie. You know, we're just touching the surface. And with a movie this complex, oh, no. we really need to get into the layers. Like, for example, what does the alien stand for? What are his beliefs? What does he know jujitsu too? Maybe the alien. That, that, maybe like, the aliens like know sambo, and that's why he's pissed at all the jujitsu <laughs> people. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, that'd be awesome. He's just a Russian alien in a gi top <laughs> with little shorts on and wrestling shoes. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we, can, we can't show it all, but I'll find a mad bit from it just. To yeah, give we can like flavor. probably flick it in for yeah. a second or two. I just. I mean, trailers, because you tra- Yeah, I guess we probably can't. Anyway, I mean, so they're running through the... <laughs> they're running through the woods right now. There's, like, lasers being shot at them. I, I just... The Ninja Death Stars. I saw some Ninja Death Stars. I just don't understand why they called it Jiu-Jitsu. No. I, I have to... There's so want, much more I don't understand. So, well, I mean, there, there are other forms of Jiu-Jitsu, right? Like, there's a Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. I trained with a guy when I was in uh, West Virginia when I just started doing... Brazilian jiu-jitsu, he did something called Saikon or small circle jiu-jitsu. And it was like, you know, it's a little similar to Aikido. It's a lot of wrist locks, wrist lock takedowns, pinning, getting people's arm hammer lock like trips and getting them into that police lock yeah. type stuff. Like old school joint manipulation, but 
mostly like wrist locks and, and shit like that. There were a few chokes that they knew. Any but, lasers? Sorry? Sword, any lasers? Swords? No, no. Uh, no, so it's not that jujitsu either. Not that I saw. <laughs> not that I saw. But they would also do like some palm strikes and, and stuff like that too. So it was a little bit of a self-defense Aikido jujitsu type thing. So I, I don't know if they're referring to... It's not called Brazilian jujitsu. No, no, it's not. So... But I'm pretty sure no form of jujitsu has laser pistols. I don't know. This one definitely does. So, <laughs> that, look. Oh. You, the, oh, but just put that. Just put that paused image up. Ladies, get ready. <laughs> get ready for the smolder. Get ready for the Nicolas Cage smolder. For all you listeners out there, you're missing Nicolas Cage. That is Cage. intense eye that contact. In, that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm that finding myself super, drawn into he's, it. He's he's looking right into my soul, dude. <laughs> he's looking into my soul. Look at that. That is ridiculous. <laughs> I love Nick Cage. Oh my god! I just always have that image, the meme of Wicker Man, where he's like the bees, no, and he's like got the bees in his head, and he's oh, just screaming. He's the alien. Just a quick still of the alien. Oh, so this is D Drax. Is it, this no. is Drax. Drax. No, it can't be Drax. Marvel. No, that's, that's, that's Marvel. Uh, <laughs> Drax. That's, that's Batista. <laughs> so this is the alien. That's the alien. Fires ninja stars out of its arm. He probably knows jujitsu. I believe it. I'm sold. So that's the alien. All right. Well, he just looks. God, Nicolas Cage looking fine. <laughs> looking fine, Nicolas Cage. I wish I had that hair. Wow. I don't even know how to... You know what I haven't seen? A single training video of Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage doing jiu-jitsu. No. Like, I haven't no. seen a single one. You know, you get all these celebrities that train, right? Like, Henry Cavill was training for Superman, and Jonah Hill trains, and there's a bunch of... <laughs> Russell Brand trains. You get a bunch of these guys that actually uh, train jiu-jitsu. Keanu Reeves was doing a lot of it for... Uh, John Wick. John Wick. Yeah. I just wonder if... Well, okay, over under, what, what are your odds that we see an armbar? <laughs> if you had to guess now, what's the percentage that you see a jiu-jitsu move? This legit, an armbar, a rear naked choke, maybe a triangle. Do you think there'll be any ground fighting? Based on the trailer. They have to, do some, they have to put something in there, right? Like, it's got to be a little bit. Uh, based on everything I've seen from the trailer, I say there is 0% chance of any jiu-jitsu moves being in there. You know, and like they're... They talk about this like order, this ju ancient, what was it? Like ancient jujitsu order? Ancient order of jujitsu. So what, that, that's the Gracies? So I mean, they're going to have to talk about some history. Like there's got to be, whether it's fictional or real, there's going to have to be some backstory as to like what the kind of training that they're doing and what kind of jujitsu this is. Or I wonder if jujitsu is just going to be like a, a, a replacement word for like martial art, like Jedi, right? Like, oh, we're jujitsu masters. We're the, you know, like... One of those nights, like Kung Fu, right? Like, no one really knows what Kung Fu means. There's tons of versions of it. And you can see in all those Chinese movies, those old school Kung Fu movies where they're flying through the air and shit. But they call it Kung Fu. Yeah. Right? But they're getting zipped along a line and doing all these crazy kicks <laughs> and spitting their sip spears and shit at each other. They'll call that Kung Fu. So, I don't know. Maybe they're just using the term super liberally. I'd say very liberally seen is the still that I'm on at this moment in time is a woman holding a laser spear. Let's see. <laughs> I mean... It's got jujitsu written all over it. <laughs> so that should be interesting. How many people do you, th you think most... I feel like most of the jujitsu community wants to know what the fuck is going on with yeah, this movie. Like, like, I feel like it's so bizarre that you're, people are just like... They're, they're confused, but they're also a little intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and every, everybody who does jujitsu is like, I've got to see this film. Because then you know that there'll be... You know, people who don't do jujitsu and don't know who it is, but will have seen this film, and then you're going to be like, "Oh yeah, I train jujitsu." They're going to be imagining laser cannons and <laughs> machine guns. So, Jake, you and I are going to have to get some laser pistols. Yep. Uh, we're going to have to get some swords. It looks like some some laser spears. Maybe a a Darth Maul looking mask like that dude's wearing, and then we, we'll we'll film some technique videos, <laughs> and we will discuss the jujitsu in the jujitsu movie. Yep. So if you all are excited for that, just let us know. I'm actually, is it wrong to say I'm more excited for that than I am the UFC next weekend? <laughs> yeah, we talked about this idea a little bit, and both of us are like, this could be hilarious. <laughs> this could be absolutely hilarious. I don't know, man. I'm excited for it. I don't know what the fuck's going to go on this movie, but, but I'm down. We'll watch it. We'll, we'll do a silly breakdown. I don't know. <laughs> all right. What else you got, man? Uh, not a lot. Um, what were we talking earlier about the... PlayStation 5 and the oh. Xbox and how you cannot get one for the love of God in Singapore. I'm so disappointed. I am a PlayStation gamer. I'm not a PC gamer and I'm a pretty avid gamer. I game pretty regularly. And I tried to go because I thought I was cool to get a PS5 reserved like two weeks ago and they were like, it's sold out till February. 
And I was like, are you kidding me? And they were like, no. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll see you in February. I guess I'm not getting that then. Just kind of bummed out, but I can still live with my PS4 for a while. You sold yours like a fool. No, because oh, I didn't really. I thought like when they were advertising all new games and stuff, like the new Assassin's Creed and the new Spider-Man, I just assumed they were all PS5 games. I didn't actually realize they were going to release them on PS4. Yeah, as well. I'm still, I'm still going to play. I'll probably go home and get Valhalla tonight, Assassin's Creed, because uh, I was ready to get Cyberpunk. I am so pumped for Cyberpunk 2077. I, the Witcher 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. CD Projekt Red's like one of the best game studios in the world. And I was really, really pumped to play that game. And they delayed it. They delayed it. My wife pre-ordered it for me like months ago for my birthday because I was so pumped about it. And uh, well, so they delayed it. So I need something to get me over the hump until then. But I wanted, I was like, okay, I'll get my PS5 in November and then I'll play it. But now oh I'll God. probably have to play Cyberpunk before I get my PS5. And then I'm like, should I wait? Because I'm so pumped for it. Is it worth the wait? Or... I just gotta play it. I think I can't wait. Yeah, it's still gonna be sick even on. It'd PS4. be amazing still. But what what was the price of a PS5? Yeah. It's like five or six hundred, right? So carousel, this sandwich there. One one thousand and eighty. Oh, you dirty, dirty bastards! You carousel. Okay, how many? Does it have a bunch of likes and stuff? This is probably the only right. place you can wait. So, are they selling this one or is this a pre-order? Uh, so someone's pre-ordered it. And but then do they actually have it? Like, can you pick this up right now? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are the important questions, Jake. These are the questions that need to be answered. I'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for it, probably. <laughs> so self collection date? No, so it's not out yet. Nineteenth. Nineteenth. I mean, if if I could get it early, <laughs> there's a good <laughs> chance I, I might go pay that price right now. Uh, but they delayed Cyberpunk anyway. That's what I'm really, really waiting on for. But I'm going to need a game to hold me over. Uh, they just released. Miles Morales, that Spider-Man game. I played the first one. That was pretty good. Yep. So could could play that one. So it's either Spider-Man or Assassin's Creed. They both look pretty sick. I don't know. I think I think Spider-Man will be better, but I think I'll enjoy Assassin's Creed more. Yeah, it's meant to be um, huge as well, like massive. I world. couldn't even I couldn't even finish Odyssey. Did you play that one? No, I'm not. It was ridiculous. You look at the map. It, I mean, it literally got to the point where I was 30 hours in. I discovered like 15% of the map. You <laughs> cannot understand how much content there is. It got to the point where I was just like so overwhelmed by shit to do that I was like, I can't even. Well, I, he, I just, yeah. it's when, like, when a video game has more things for you to do than your real life, you've yeah. got problems. It's like, you know, when you roll with your coach or something like that and you reach a point where you're getting, there's nothing, you're trapped everywhere. Every move that you make, you're losing. There's a certain point where you're like, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to stop moving because there's, everything I do is wrong, right? Like you just, you, you get to the point where you're just like, I'm going to give up. I'm just going to, it was like that. Yeah. I was like, first I was, I was like, there's so much to do. There's so, look at all, I can take my ship here. I can go over here and kill these people, do this thing. And after a while, you're just like, oh my God, there is so much, I can't handle this. Like, this is overwhelming. And it was. So I think that's why they, I heard they streamlined the map for, for this one. Sorry, everybody who's here for MMA content and you're getting video game content as well. <laughs> video games and Mad, Mad Nick Cage films. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I regret nothing. These are the things I got going on in my life right now. I want to play the PS5. Jiu-Jitsu movies coming out this weekend. Things are all right. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. I heard a rumor. Should I say it? I can the, say it because I, I, I won't say it. No who. one knows. Yeah. yeah, but I have a friend who just told me yesterday that he knows, he's a teacher, and he works at one of these fancy-ass... Atas schools where <clears throat> kids pay a lot of money, so there's a lot of like rich ass parents. And uh, he told me that like one of his students was like the daughter of a general, or one of his students was friends with the daughter of a general, or some something like that. One of these kids that goes to one of these schools, and he told me that phase three. He gave me a specific date, which I thought <laughs> was confusing. He's like December seventh. Yeah. And I was like, like, how do you have an exact date? Uh, and he, he's like, oh, well, I heard it from a kid whose parents or some blah, 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 high in the government or whatever. And, uh, and I was like, damn, that seems really fast. It's what now? It's the 11th of, 15, fi- sorry, 15th 15. of November. 15th of November as we're recording this. If it's December 7th, that's like three weeks from now. That would be sick. And it wouldn't be unusual because Circuit Breaker ended, they announced it like five days in advance or something yeah. to phase two. Like no one could prepare for it. It happened so fast. So, uh... If my friend is right, then I just broke news on the podcast <laughs> for all you people that have been dying to train contact jiu-jitsu. Hopefully, full contact comes back December 7th. If it does, this gym is going to be off the fucking hook. 
Yeah. I cannot wait to roll, man. Everybody's going to be so crunk. People are going to fly through the windows. It's going to be, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> You're going to have to like limit it to like, like two. We started with one minute rounds, like two minute rounds, and just give people like build up instead of like straight in six minutes. <laughs> yeah, because all we're doing is just. I mean, we've been getting good workouts in our BJJ classes. All we've been doing is uh, like, like uh, drilling. Light contact, break, not sustain, not on top of each other, like take down, stand up, separate, you know, working with the same people, drilling over and over, like flow drills where you're distance, like, oh, take down, push the legs to the side, stand up, a lot of single leg, double legs, like nothing where people are jumping on top of each other. So when people can like, when these jujitsu people can start on their knees again, like, like little <laughs> pussies, when they can start on their knees and pull and sit on their butt, and display their butt to everyone, like Yuri Samoyce. <laughs> Instant no. pull guard, just, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I can't wait, man. I'm just making jokes about the guard pulling guys, I get it. My favorite quote about guard pulling of all time is I think it was by Chris Howder, but he goes, uh, he goes, guard pulling is like masturbation. We all do it, but if you're proud of it, you're fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Guard pull, we all do it, we, I get it. I talk shit about it, we all do it, but just don't. Just hide it, please. Like, be less proud of it. You shouldn't. It's disgusting. It's a disgusting, nasty habit. <clears throat> I'd rather. No, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I already didn't get monetized on YouTube, probably because of my foul mouth. I don't know what it was. What do you think that was, Jake? I don't know. I was thinking about it. You did name an episode "Wife Beater Chronicles." <laughs> I mean, I don't see the problem. <laughs> I don't see the problem with that. So I'm conflicted. Let me let me let me give you my opinion on this, right? I'm conflicted for two reasons. One, I want money at some point. <laughs> I would like this channel to be monetized. It's, you know, this is like, it started out as my hobby, but ultimately I, I'm sticking it out for the long run and I would like it to do well. I want it to succeed. It's a, it's a business project of mine. I, I enjoy doing it. But I also don't want to change how I talk or what I do or, you know, because it's so Singapore to just, Keep the content clean. Don't say anything outrageous because it's ridiculous. Don't make a joke and don't say something. So like when I say nonsense, like Yuri Samoy sticking his butthole, I'm just, I'm just saying it because it's ridiculous, right? Of course, I don't mean that. I'm just saying it because it's ridiculous. And I would like to be able to do that because it's, I think it's fun. I enjoy it. But if I feel like that we have to like make this clean and advertiser friendly that's how they put it when they denied uh they denied the uh the ad revenue was that it didn't say it didn't say specifically what the issue was it's it didn't flag any video in particular it's just like oh you need to fix this but it didn't tell me what yeah. to fix i mean i would if there's a reasonable line i'm happy to do that but my favorite part about this podcast is that we drink on here we fool around we make jokes we say nonsense we have a good time i don't want this to be just some cookie cutter like watching Ariel Helwani talk to MMA fighters, just super, like, I want to hang out and drink and shoot the shit and make jokes and be weird and, you know, all that kind of stuff because I think that's what, that's how I am and that's what this market could use because so much of this Singapore content is just so uptight. It's hard to watch. You watch the ads or you watch other podcasts based in Singapore, like, they're fine. They're just so, I don't know, how would you describe it? It's sanitary. It's, it's not a culture where it's, like you don't massively step out of line or anything like that in Singaporean culture. And, that and I don't want to step out of line. I'm not like, I'm not going to be rude to any, I'm not rude. I'm not yeah. impolite. I'm not, I just say silly, like ridiculous things because I think they're funny. Right. I mean, and just like drinking on here with the guests and getting a little loose and get, it's just, it's fun. And that's how I like, I like talking to people and, but it is Singapore, but I'm not going to be, I'm not stepping out of line. I'm not going to say crazy shit about the government. I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm just, but you know, what's weird about Singapore. I feel for all the flack that it gets, you don't feel any of it. No, I, uh, like, I can't tell you how few police I've seen here. I can't tell you how, I mean, I see people getting drunk in bars, talking nonsense, being loud, all the merry stuff that you see pretty much everywhere else. I've never felt like the hand of authority of Singapore like on my shoulder ever. And even some of the crazy stuff I've said on the podcast, like I've never, no one's really, that I know of has complained or reported me or anything like that. So even though it is strict here, I feel like most people are kind of just like, mind your own business, you know? Yeah. 
You say what you want. It's if it's your thing, as long as you're not stirring the pot and being crazy and you know, rioting or inciting or nonsense like that, then like never heard a complaint from people. But you look at like all the expats and stuff like that that got um, sent out of the country because of breaking rules in Circuit Breaker. It was the ones who did it in stupid places where they were bound to be seen. There was the one down on one of the keys where they were all drinking outside the bar. Yeah. Like, just don't do it there. Do it in a hawker in the middle of nowhere. You'd have got away with it. And then there were a bunch that went to one of the islands and someone took a photo of them all, masks off. There were like 12 of them or something. Don't post that online and you'd be fine. But if you're going to, you know, flo- like put it in the authority's face, you're going to have a hard time. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, if, if, if I was one of those ideologues, right, like one of those... Uh, those people that was like really idealistic and kind of, you know, if you imagine in the U S right, if you did a podcast and you're telling people to not wear masks in the U S they're not going to say shit. No. You come on a podcast in Singapore and tell people <laughs> to stop wearing masks. Then you're dealing with problems, right? Then you're dealing with problems. And, and that's the kind of stuff that Singapore is not down with, right? If you disturb the peace, right? If you disturb the stability, that's the stuff that you really get in trouble for. But if you're just, you know, if you're just you're drinking and having a good time, nonsense, shooting the shit, talking like this, being loud, whatever. Like, Singapore got a lot of patience for that. You see police here, even dealing with uncles, dealing with drunk people. They're not fast to the trigger. They're not, like, they're de-escalating. Like, Singapore is surprisingly chill, I feel. Yeah. I feel like it. Because, uh, I mean, there's a lot of liberalism in Singapore. There's a lot of expats here, you know what I mean? And uh, people talk about Singapore like it's this thing, but, man, it really doesn't ever feel like that. No, it's, um, it's a very nice place. We, me and Em were once at Marina Bay Sands and there was an expat there, like big guy, younger than me. And he saw he was absolutely off his face. And I don't mean drunk, like he was high as a kite. And he came up and started bugging me and Em and wouldn't go away. And I was just trying to say to him like, mate, what are you doing? Yeah. Like you are, mass- you are drawing attention to yourself in the middle of Marina Bay Sands and you are clearly off your face, like you need to go back to your room or something. I don't What's, know what, what was he doing? Like, what was he, what was he saying? Oh, you know when you see someone and they're like on speed and they just... Oh, he like, was on like an yeah, upper or something. That sort of, he was giving uh, it all out and then he was like saying stuff to me about like, oh, you know, you and your wife are staying in the hotel, you know, you're gonna have a good time tonight. I was like, mate, <laughs> go away. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was just, what was he thinking doing that in Marina Bay Sands? I assume, Towards the end of the night, the police would have just shown up, took him away, deported him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I love Singapore, right? This is, uh, it's, it's definitely one of the best countries I've ever been to. Uh, it'd be really, really tough to leave this place. People here are just so cool. The country is so great. Like, that's why, you know, you can't really say anything about Singapore. Like, everybody that lives here has accepted all of the terms. Like, Singapore makes sure that you accept the terms for living here. And then you realize that if you do... Like, the quality of life here is so good that, yeah, it's amazing. you know, I say it all the time on this podcast, people for, who are uh, living in another country don't understand. You can put your six-year-old child on a public bus alone and send them to school, and it's totally fine. They will arrive there 100%. You're a six-year-old. Do you imagine in New York? Do you imagine in L.A.? Sending your kid, your six-year-old, on a public bus? No. I mean, there's no way in hell you could do that. Uh, so there is a certain amount of safety that you have here. You don't have a lot of drunkenness. You don't. You, you have it a little bit, but people know to kind of be, keep it on the DL, not be in people's face. People still do, but you know, mostly keep it under control. You, and, you can find it anywhere, like yeah. if you know where to. Like if you're down one of the keys late at night before circuit breaker, then yeah, there's drunk people all coming out of clubs. What do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. But it's few and far between, and it's so. It's not like back in England where doesn't matter what pub you go in there's probably going to be a fight. Yeah. Like, it's not like that here. You know where to go and you, you know, you know where there's trouble and you just don't go there. Well, I think, uh, and, then, and that's the thing that I was skeptical about starting this podcast because I know me <laughs> and, I, and I know that I have a, a bit of a foul mouth. You know, I'm, I'm well-natured, but I have a bit of a foul mouth. And then I, I knew that when I did this podcast, I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be a hangout. Like, I want to have cool people on here, shoot the shit, talk about martial arts, you know, whether it's you and me or you and me and a guest or me and Charmaine or whoever. I just, I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be stuffy. I don't want it to be stiff. But I knew when starting the podcast also how I am. And I was a little worried about what can I say? What can I do? And I can honestly tell you, there's pretty much nothing I haven't said. You know, again, I'm not like this. 
I'm not a radical in any stretch. I'm a centrist on pretty much everything politically. I don't have these crazy views. Maybe I'm a little bit conservative, so I'm not going to just spout my nonsense anyway. So, But I'm just happy that uh, that we can do it like this. Like that yeah. We can just sit here and drink and, and talk nonsense and talk about jujitsu, the movie, and all, <laughs> all this kind of stuff and it not be an issue. Uh, it's good, man. I can't wait to roll. That's the last thing that we need to get over this uh, coronavirus stuff, at least here. Dude, I think next year, January, February, there's going to be no cases anymore. No. But the rest of the world is going bad. U.S. is having, they're going to have 200,000 cases next week a day. And then uh, U.K. is back under. Yeah, my uh, my parents are you know, stuck, locked down, can't go around to see any of the family and stuff like that, can't meet the friends. But the U.K. has got insane rules at this moment in time. Like, the schools are still open. So that's not slowing any COVID cases down. And then you can go for a drink, but you have to buy a meal as well. So then all these places, all these bars just started selling food. And it's like, well, you're not really locked down, are you? You're just doing this awful version of it. That's why, like, I don't understand why the world doesn't understand that if you don't fully go for it, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go like 100%. Everybody has to do it. If you keep living in this middle ground, you're going to keep getting cases. It's like, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Texas, like Joe Rogan's talking about Texas all the time. He's like, yeah, it's great. Nobody's wearing masks. Everybody, everything's going. Texas has the most cases in the world. <laughs> And it's like they kind of decided that they're just like you know what we don't care. And it's like all right, but then you're still but then you're still going to be dealing with it. Yeah. Like and the thing is is like the borders are open between all the states. So California is on this really strict lockdown. People are pissed because they don't want to get locked down again. Meanwhile, Texas is like fuck it, and they're all traveling back and forth and and doing all that kind of stuff. So it's like even if California does the strictest lockdown in the nation, if Texas doesn't do shit, nothing's going to get fixed, right? The, the cases are not going to go away until there's like some herd, herd immunity. Yeah. So like if the whole country doesn't get behind it, you can't, you may as well not bother. Yeah. You may as yeah. well not bother. And just, but as a government, you can't just accept all these people dying from the COVID, right? You just can't as a government do nothing. Well, I mean, that's what Trump basically, <laughs> I mean, you say that, but that's, that's definitely what they have been doing. But a responsible government needs to do something. You can't just leave it unchecked completely. But the problem is, you know, you get each state does it differently and then travel between the states is always permitted. So like if they're doing one thing in California, they're doing another thing in Texas, like California may as well open up if Texas is doing it because yeah. you're not going to stop it. No. If you're not going to stop it, then you're killing the economy. Like <laughs> just say goodbye to your old people, I guess. I don't know what the plan is. Apparently, because in Singapore, everybody just does it. No one says anything. Everybody yeah. does what they're supposed to do. Pretty much zero cases now. Yeah, economy is totally back. Like some industries are slightly limited. Like jujitsu, for example. There are others. You can only have five people at a, at a going out. So you know, restaurants and bars are limited too. All that kind of stuff. But we did it for eight months solid and there's going to be no cases and then pretty soon everything's going to be able to open back up i don't think borders are going to open up until probably 2022 if you read between the lines of what it said in the straits times article about it there were it was basically the options are if we open up travel we keep all our restrictions in place so the masks the five numbers and stuff like that if we let go go into phase three and it's not the masks and it's not the five numbers we're not opening up travel and don't open up yeah, travel. I'm like, well, I'm fine with that. Let's keep yeah. the travel closed because my day-to-day -day life would be super sweet. Yeah, it's like make Singapore good. Yeah. Then, you know, they're doing the bubble already. So they're already experimenting with, uh, for the listeners that don't know, there's a, there, and there's people that listen to this podcast from different countries, but in Singapore, they're uh, creating this travel bubble, tra travel bubble, travel, travel bubble, bubble, travel bubble uh, between certain uh, cities and countries and within like so Singapore and Hong Kong for example will be a bubble because Hong Kong has pretty much got the COVID shit under control so uh, you can go there you have to do your tests and stuff but they're going to allow the travel and you don't have to quarantine you just have to get tested and prove that you're negative and that kind of stuff is the move lock out lock out all the international travel from countries that are still dealing with it the ones that get a lockdown on it you can slowly start to open those up but I think get Singapore going first yeah I need BJJ back in my life ASAP I'm, my skills are deteriorating quickly. It's embarrassing. Sean's still training all the time. He's coming after me. He's been training all the time. He's coming after me in this time when I can't roll. All right, dude, you got anything else? Uh, no, oh. I think that's about it. One How of the cameras. How long have you been going? Um, Fair uh, Hour and 20. All right, cool. Excellent. Okay, so we will be back next week. Uh, next week will be the return of beer. <laughs> the return of beer on the podcast. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Uh, so I can drink as of Tuesday, 
or something like that. Steven sent me a message like two days ago saying in four days. Well, three, what's three the message? Days. A countdown timer. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. So I don't know. Uh, next week, maybe we do a podcast with them. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Maybe we just me and Jake will do it. It's hard to say. But we will definitely be having a beer or two. Yes. So it might get a little silly next week. A little crazy. Uh, yeah, maybe have Ron or Steven or, or Charmaine or you or I don't know. We'll see what's going on. But definitely we'll have some, uh, some beers. The fights are on next week, so we'll break down those. What's the fight card after next week? Can you check really quick? Just so I know what we'll be previewing next week. Give me a sec. This fight's every weekend, man. Every weekend. Like, between uh, Bellator 1 and the Blades, UFC. Blades Lewis. Oh, okay. So, next week. What's, uh, can you pull up the main card there? So, next week on the podcast, we will have some beers, finally. Uh, we'll break down the, the Figueredo Perez fight, and then we'll break down the Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis, Derek Lewis my balls is hot. Uh, we'll break that down. My balls was hot. I had to correct my grammar to make it incorrect. Okay, who else do we got here? Malcolm Gordon. Okay, I know him. Takeshi Sato. Who else? What, go down. It's only got more. the top three on it for now, okay. so I guess they've not filled it. <clears throat> All right, so that main event is pretty sweet, but the rest is a little, little loose. All right. All right, so we'll break that down next week. We'll have some beers on the podcast. Is there one? There might be probably one next weekend, too. Enter the Matrix 27 the Matrix, or yeah. whatever the hell number they're on. Every, every week it's just Enter the Matrix, uh, a new number. Is that the new one? Is that the one card coming up? Let me see. Yeah, let's take a look here. Oh, yeah. It, it is another Inside the Matrix. What number are they on now? Four. <sighs> Come on. All right. Who, what's the main card here? So this is the one championship next, this Friday. Can you zoom in? I can't, I can't quite see that thing. Okay. Don't know them. No. Okay, Joseph Vasiri. I know. Ooh, Rocky Ogden. That's a good fight. That's a good Muay Thai fight. Uh, yeah, Those are both great uh, Muay Thai fighters. Joseph Vasiri had that great fight with Jonathan Haggerty. Uh, Rocky Ogden's a solid guy. Been Muay Thai guy. Fought, had a bunch of fights and won. That's pretty solid. I like that fight. Who else we got? Oh, Bruno oh, Pucci's Bruno back. back. Okay. Uh, Quan Juan Il. So Pucci's fighting. That's good. That's Angela Lee's husband. Used to train with him back in Evolve. He's a really, really nice guy. Hopefully he's uh, coming along with his wrestling and his striking, because his jujitsu is legit, legit. He wrecked me, r r wrecked me. Um, okay, cool. Okay, so there's some good fights there. Yep. Nice. That Muay Thai fight, Rocky Ogden, Joseph Lasiri. That's a good fight. Uh, Pucci's on the card. What was that main event again? Was that a title fight or something? I, I don't know. No, there's guys. no belt on the line for this one. Just is it, is it catch Muay fight. Is it Muay Thai or? Uh, yeah, kickboxing. Oh, kickboxing. Okay. So we've got that on Friday, and then MMA on the weekend. Cool. And we're going to be coming at you with a technique video soon. I'm working on some stuff. Uh, so for you guys that enjoy that content, we're going to uh, release a... I think what I'm going to do is release like a, a, a MMA for dummies type video, right? It's going to be just, I think, like a 10-minute, 15-minute video. And I'm literally going to go through like every scenario where... Or sorry, every like main technique, like... 95% of the techniques that you're going to see from how to stand, which leg do you put in front, oh, you have left leg in front, orthodox, right leg, southpaw, you have the front toe turned in, boxing stance, you can be in a sideways stance like in Taekwondo and Karate. Then we're going to break down all the individual punches that you can throw, uh, all of the kicks, and then I'm going to start to show you guys some takedowns. I'll break down all the different guards and sweeps and submissions and positions, and it'll be a really, really quick video so you can get kind of what modern day unarmed combat looks like. Uh, and it'll include all of the terminology and the nomenclature that we use. So for you people that are listening that uh, maybe like MMA and you're not totally sure what's going on all the time, this video will be good. And then I think what I'm going to do is break that down into segments where, uh, like, so for example, I'll break it down into the stand-up and I'll break down a jiu-jitsu segment and then I'll break down uh, a striking segment where I'll go into further detail on the short clip video. And then I think I'm going to release that as a series. And I'm going to do that for my students. So they can kind of see it and, uh, you know, it's, it's good for trials when I get new people that come into the gym that want to know, like, they come into an MMA class. Yeah. What's a guard? Yeah. You come into an MMA class and I'll be like, okay, so this leg goes in front, hands go here, elbows go in. These are straight punches. These are hooks. These are uppercuts. You could throw them all to the body as well. Then these are round kicks and these are push kicks and these are teeps. And oh, by the way, we haven't even started grappling yet. Single legs, double legs, high crotches, snap downs, rain. Rain. Rain is coming. We're going to finish this podcast You're gonna soon. You're going to have to shout the ending. <laughs> Half guard, spider guard, call it whatever. It's all coming for you people, okay? So I'm going to release that technique video soon. So uh, 
Thank you guys for listening. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the podcast. Check out the audio version too if you're ever in a rush and you don't have time for the video. So this is the Stronghold Podcast. Thank you, Jake. Thank we you. Are, we are out. Good night. Thank you.